Hi, it's Claire from Comeback Brighter here. Today, I'm going to address the issue of hate when it comes to how you're feeling about a narcissist. Um, and this is because I've received a question from someone that says, is it normal that I hate my narcissistic mother? Now, I think that uh, the first thing I want to do is reassure you that I think this is completely normal. I think I think that it's part of the grieving process. I think it's I think it's part of the process of validating yourself, because what happens when you go through narcissistic abuse is the narcissist will use many tactics to make you feel like the their behavior is normal. Uh, they will do things like isolate you so you can't compare them to other people to see that their behavior is unreasonable, that it's abusive. Uh, all these things, okay? So that's just one example of how they will do things to to uh, make the abuse feel like a normal thing, okay? And it's and it's and effectively, what it is, it's like breaking you down over time, okay? Um, and 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 particularly when it comes to a narcissistic parent, is because you've been born and raised in that environment, you it's normal to you, okay? So that the things that they do are just the way that people behave and because also they do things that that like like that gaslight you they make you doubt your reality um they blame you if you're the scapegoat which the chances are you probably are if you're watching this video then then these things make up make us doubt ourselves and when we're stuck in that place of doubt we're much more likely to to continue with it to allow it to be in contact with them still so that they can still continue to abuse us, okay? And that's why they do it. When you're doubting it, when you think it's your fault, when you're being gaslit, when you're being invalidated, when other ma members of the family are joining in with it too, what happens then is, is it you, st you start to truly believe that it's you, okay? Because you're the only one that's being treated like it. You're the only one that's complaining about it. You're the only one that seems to think that it's wrong because when you raise it with the other family members, they don't say that it's wrong. They're not shocked or they don't want to protect you, all these things, okay? So the whole system is set up so that it becomes narcissistic abuse is your normal, okay? And what can happen is you can spend years, decades, okay, in this very, very toxic environment, okay? And it isn't potentially until you come out of that and you go into adult life and maybe you come away from your narcissistic parents that you start to see that their behaviours are strange at the very least and then maybe to see that they are toxic and abusive. But it's all part of the process, okay? And because effectively during your childhood, your your natural kind of instinct, your kind of intuition um, that protects you has been has been invalidated and denied and because you've doubted your reality by their systematic gaslighting and lying and twisting reality and all these things that they do it means that when we come to the end of it and we're starting to start something happens okay and it could be it could be that you find out about narcissistic personality disorder or it could be that all of these years of abuse come up to this big crescendo and there's like either a big row or it's just like the last little thing that's just like, I just can't take this anymore. OK, and then maybe you're thinking about no contact. Maybe you're not. It doesn't it doesn't matter. But but you reach like a breaking point. OK, and that's the point at which it's like the culmination of all those years of abuse. OK, but then what happens is it, in your mind, you see, because because narcissistic abuse was your normal. OK, because it was it was perpetrated by the narcissist. But it was also like the rest of the family also joined in on it, too. If you're the scapegoat, you're the you're not just a narcissist target, you're the family's target. You then have a like a systematic kind of unpicking of everything. OK, it, working through how you've been treated, working through that those things that you went through weren't normal. They weren't normal. They were toxic. They were abusive. And and what happens is you go because we're so desperate, we're so desperate for love from the narcissist. OK, that that's our focus. OK, until we get reached that breaking point when we're like, 
this just isn't right. And then what happens is, as you're starting to validate yourself, as you're starting to realize, like, really, the hell that you've been put through, that you had no choice about because you're a child, you had no choice about being born into that family, you had you had no choice to leave, you had no option of leaving because you were reliant on these people. You start it starts to tilt the other way. And it's like a I, I personally think it's a completely natural reaction to uh when you're actually truly starting to acknowledge that you've been abused. Okay. And what I would say for me personally was was I don't know that I went so much through the hate stage, but I went through a stage where I wanted revenge. And and I and I think that part is all tied in with the same thing, is that I wanted I wanted to hurt them like they'd hurt me because I because I could see it. I could see it. I could see how their treatment of me was abuse. And my thing was in my rage and my sadness and my confusion and everything else that I was feeling was I wanted to get back at them in some way. I wanted to inflict wanted to inflict the same pain on them that they had done with me. Okay. And and so what happens is you can you can get the, the thing is is to accept that this is a normal part of the healing process. And and personally I think it's a very important part of the healing process. It's essential. I think you have to go through that. I think that that when it comes to the healing process, you've got you've gone through you've you've gone through your childhood. You wanted your parent to love you, okay? And then what happens is you go to the other extreme when you start to hate them, and it's like that like everything's out of balance, okay? You where you loved them before, and you put on the rose tinted glasses, and you thought that you saw love and care and tension out of them, and all this stuff. You start to really see it for what it was and you start to see it as abuse and you go right the way to the other end of the scale. OK, and that's not a healthy place to be. Right. So loving them and wanting them to love you and being desperate for them to love you is not a healthy place to be. OK, that leaves you vulnerable to, vulnerable to their abuse. OK, but when you swing to the other end, when you really start to validate yourself. That also is not good for you, okay? It's not good to stay in that place of hate, okay? That's like that's like an energy in you that is like being like being spent in the wrong direction, okay? It's being invested in the wrong person, okay? And I'm not saying go and hate somebody else. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is what I found really helped me was to actually write out like any any feelings that I had, any feelings of hate or anger or bitterness or frustration or confusion, anything is get it out onto paper. Okay. So that actually got it out of my head. And and even to write out like my revenge ideas, what I want to happen is this. What I would really like is for my father to be the one that's isolated from the family. I'd like him to suffer like I've suffered, blah, 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 all the stuff that I was thinking. Okay. And not acting, never acting, never act from revenge or hate, okay? But what I did was I channeled that desire for revenge and hate into I'm going to get over this, okay? I'm going to heal and I'm going to live my best life, okay? So I turned it around. I refocused that energy that I had in like desire for revenge and hating them into it actually started off as like F you, this is going to, from this, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back brighter, okay? That's what it started as for me. I'm going to put this energy that I have, all this hate and anger and resentment and everything and desire for revenge, I'm going to put this back into my life. I'm going to focus on my healing. I'm going to do what I have to to heal. I'm going to uh, work through the stuff that I've got to work through so that I can come through this so that I can be the best of mum and wife and friend and and all the stuff that I can be that's what I did I channeled it I used it to serve me because if you stay in that place of anger what you're doing is is again, right? I want to say this to you, right? You, the narcissist has had you for decades, okay? The way I see it was I went no contact when I was 36. They had me until 36, right? And then from that point onwards, from the point at which I went no contact, 
and I realized the truth about the dynamic, that was it. They lost me. If I spent too much of my time in hate and revenge and anger and bitterness and frustration and confusion at them, they were still in my life. They were still ruling my life. So if I'd gone on for two years in this place of anger and rage and hating them, they would have had 38 years of my life. And I already hated that they'd had 36. So it's a completely normal reaction, but use it to serve you. And even what happens then is what happened with me was it was it was my like motivating force for me to get going. OK, it was it was the kick up the backside that I needed to be like, right, I'm getting I'm, I'm going to heal from this. I'm going to I'm going to come back brighter. My life is going to be better. I'm going to be healed. I'm going to I'm going to deal with all this crap. I'm going to deal with all the trauma I've gone through. I'm going to deal with the traits that I have because we all come out of this with narcissistic traits, behaviors that we've picked up from being up in that toxic environment that don't, that aren't us. So we'll work through that, okay? And then what happened is, I, because that was like the kick, it was like the motivation that I needed to get going, I kept on going. So they, they were like the motivating force at the start, okay? Because I was like, to be honest, I was like, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm not a loser. I'm not all the things that you told me that I am. That was what started me. But after a little while, I wasn't doing it for the same reason anymore. I was just doing it because I wanted to heal. I wanted to get better. And I shifted my focus from them to me. And that's really important. Because you, if you went, if you, if you've been, well, I was 36 when I went no contact. So my focus had been on them for 36 years. And you don't realize until you're free of it, truly free of it, how much energy and time and how much of you you've invested in these people. And you do have to do that at the, at the start because you have to work through. They did this to me, right? And that wasn't right. And this was toxic and, and all this stuff. But, but don't keep on focusing on them too much. Redirect that energy to your healing. Okay, I think I've said it. <laughs> so I hope that you get from this that 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 hate is normal. Be reassured that's absolutely normal. It's part of the process. Now it's the point at which you decide: Am I wallowing in that hate? Am I investing too much of my time and energy in this person still, or? Do I re redirect that? And just even if you're starting off just to say, F you, I'm going to be X, Y, I'm going to be healed. My life is going to be better. I'm going to be the best person that I can be. All this stuff, even if it starts off with that, it's a starting point for you, for you and you're redirecting your precious energy. So I hope that you've got that from this message. OK, if you take nothing else, just look where you're investing your precious energy. I hope that this helps. If you need me, I am here for you. You can either drop a comment here or you can email me, Claire, C-L-A-R-E, comebackbrighter at gmail.com. Bye.